Yes, that's right. Put your hands together and welcome everybody. No matter where you are in the world today, we want to say thank you for joining us here at CSL Dallas. Whether you're watching us from around the world or you're here on our campus, thank you for being here. And I want to remind you that every day is a day for transformation, spiritual deepening, and heart connection, no matter what's going on. And every day, we learn and practice something important that makes a difference. We love that you're on your journey here with us today as we paint a new picture of prosperity with us this month. So now let's get it started. Pitch your hands together for the CSL Dallas music team. to CSL Dallas. My name is Joe Tinker. I'll be your platform assistant today. And now I have that earworm. But that's a good earworm to carry around all day. <laughs> that is great. Ladies and gentlemen, we're excited that you're joining us here, whether you're here in the sanctuary with us on campus or whether you're joining us online, because we are now into May. Happy May Day. It's the 1st of May, and we have a new monthly theme for the month of May, and it is Reimagine Prosperity. So buckle up for a ride. We're going to have some fun, and we're going to learn how to make this chant uh, a part of our lives, the one that we carry, so that our consciousness is directed towards the greatest prosperity uh, for all for ourselves and for all. All right, remember to check in on social media. This is a great way for, for you to let people know that you're involved with CSL Dallas, but the best part is that maybe a friend of yours sees it or a friend of a friend sees it, and you know what can happen? Their life could be transformed by your checking in on social media. So please do take care of that little piece of business this morning. It's important because one of our purposes here at CSL Dallas is transformation. So let's turn together towards our, uh, our statement, our uh, reason for being. And that is that we are radically inclusive, spiritually progressive, transforming lives. 
I, run, I want to run down a few items that are coming up this month that you'll want to be aware of. Uh, CSL Dallas is ensuring that we are a force for good, and one of the ways uh, that we are a force for good is by paying attention to the climate and our planet. Are you worried about uh, climate change, of course, you know, there is some concern here, uh, wondering what you could do to make a difference in the world. Tomorrow night starts a four-week online discussion of Dr. Catherine Hayhoe's new national bestseller, Saving Us, a climate scientist case for hope and healing in a divided world. This will be from 7 to 9 o'clock tomorrow. Everyone can join in. It is online. Visit the website to get registered so you can take part in the conversation. Are you ready to go beyond simple affirmations and the materialistic sort of use of the law of attraction? Now you can take your spiritual life and manifestation to a whole new level, the art and science of spiritual mind treatment. This is a new course, and it is for you. It was developed by Dr. Petra, and so she's teaching the course, along with practitioner Carol Merlo on the podium with us today, both those lovely ladies. You will discover and practice the most powerful spiritual technology, which can be used to create, to heal, and to most importantly develop a deep experience of the oneness between you and the Great One. Classes will be held both in person and online. These are going to be happening on Mondays starting May 9th. You, of course, go to our website to get registered. Also, get ready for a powerful, immersive workshop experience with Reverend Karen. This is going to be in May on May 22nd, Sunday, and it's called Reimagine Prosperity, an Immersive Experience. So have you found yourself sometimes struggling to live well, what you would call a prosperous life? Are you getting tired of struggling with the idea of prosperity? Well, now it's time to join Reverend Karen and learn her ways. She's got an immersive experience that will provide spiritual tools to shift your view, thereby shifting your experience. Move past the limiting beliefs that may be holding you back. It takes place here. It's going to be in person only. That's going to be Sunday, May 22nd, from 1 to 3. Uh, registration, of course, is open through the website, so sign up there. And register early, too, because if you do, Reverend Karen, for all early registrants, is making a gift of a free book on prosperity. That's one of her favorites. So if you're going to come to the class, might as well sign up early and get a free book. <laughs> free is always good. Hey, yeah. Free is a good place to start your prosperity. I'll take it. I'll take it. Sure. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> we're really grateful that you're here with us today, and we're going to rejoin the CSL Dallas music team now as they remind us that you are a blessing unto the world. <laughs> You are the heart, you are the hands, you are the voice of spirit on earth, and who you are and all you do is a blessing to the within.
And as you do this, notice that at the end of the breath is more air, more breath more openness and more availability. At the end of the thought is more thought, new thought beyond that which is just the old conditioned thinking. This is the abundance the abundance of air, the abundance of thought, the abundance of life that is available to each and every one of us right now, right here. And as I breathe in and recognize this great abundance, I also know that there is peace and power, prosperity available to each and every single human being on this planet. We are living in an abundant universe an abundant, living, growing, prosperous life environment that is touching each and every one of us right now. And so as we open and allow and notice, we breathe in greater peace, greater prosperity, and greater joy, knowing this is who we actually are. And knowing that this is true, that this is good, this is love. We affirm it together by saying, and so it is.
yeah, yeah. What's, what do you? Okay. Now that, that, that that's settled. Um, <laughs> this is called Seeking My Good by Margaret Owens. I stand in the silence Deafened by the echoes of the truth That flow from this knowing A collection of the evidence and proof To trust in creation itself through me aligns to know that my wanting more is selfishly Keep 
Kirby, Jonathan, Matt, and Brad. That's a Margaret Owens song, uh, a uh, phrase from Emma Curtis Hopkins. Um, and so, oh man, it's just, just so, it just so inspired me, but I have to start my talk someplace else. So <laughs> hold that thought, hold that thought of what she was singing. <laughs> So we're starting a reimagined prosperity, and I just want to uh, say, first of all, this fabulous photograph is from Reverend Karen at Victoria Falls with this beautiful <laughs> rainbow, um, and which is super cool. And then our beautiful Sacred Space team, they made our rainbow right here, um, and you know, and made the falls and the birds, and you know, we just really want to thank them for really, really doing an amazing job every every. Um, yeah, every month, something to inspire us with our theme. And so the idea here is to reimagine prosperity. Oh, man, I have a lot to say about this. So first of all, let's talk about the definitions of abundance and prosperity. So we talk a lot about these words, and we often conflate them. From a spiritual point of view, however, as we begin this um, journey this month, I want to actually take those two words apart. The definition of abundance from our point of view is that this is a quality of the universe itself. It is the universe that is itself abundant. There is abundant energy and abundant life. And if we look out at any ecosystem, we see the abundance of life continually seeking to perpetuate itself. Actually in like more lavish abundance than we can possibly imagine. And this is a quality of life that is forever available all the time in so many different forms. This beautiful waterfall is a form of the abundant flow of the universe. When it comes to us, humanity today, especially in the modern and postmodern age, we associate that abundance with our prosperity. And generally, when we're talking about our prosperity, we're talking about the forms in which that abundance comes. Money, jobs, homes, stuff, food, all of the things that we acquire that are a part of our experience of the abundance of life. Now, in New Thought, this focus on prosperity has been very seminal to the um, growth of this philosophy. Over the last 100, 150 years, there has been this strong sense that comes along with the American dream of not only independence, but also fulfilling our own destiny. That really has urged us to recognize that we are not peons in somebody else's feudal system, we are not enslaved by a corporation or a landowner, but we are in fact intrinsically, inherently valuable as individuals, and it is our destiny and our birthright to express and experience that, which is a really beautiful thought, and that we utterly believe that that is true about every single human being regardless of anything else. That is true about every single human being. And of course, if we look in nature, we recognize that nature thinks that that's true about every bit and every being and all living beings of all creation. I just came home from two weeks up in New Hampshire where it's very cold, very cold. It's barely spring, we had a little snow flurry. It's amazing, we had little daffodils. The forsythia in our cabin isn't even blooming yet. And yet the whole time we were gone, the amaryllis and the columbines in my little front area, my little front patch that I have in front of the garden, has been blooming like crazy. And do you know they don't care that I'm there not to see it? <laughs> they do not. They are simply doing their thing. They are blooming wildly. And I'm like grateful that I catch some of it, right? But they do not care whether there is anyone to see their blooming or not. They are intrinsically, inherently valuable in the beingness that they are. And they are supported by the universe to bloom these like lavishly amazing, gigantic thing, red blooms that are just awe-inspiring. 
The, the reason that we want to talk about reimagining prosperity is because prosperity, the way that we have understood it in the last hundred years, is kind of, has kind of run its course. New thought and mental science and science of mind, when it started out, really was embedded in that American dream. And, yeah. So we talked about this last week. Karen and uh, George Ann gave you a beautiful talk about Earth Day and about you know how our planet is now coping with humanity's desire for prosperity. So when I was um, at the University of Dallas and I was working on my thesis. There was a wonderful phrase that was bantered around in the philosophy and psychology classes. And this phrase, I was like, I, I, I was stunned by and then really um, began to appreciate. And it is the phrase called the juggernaut of modernity. The juggernaut of modernity. So we are moving into the postmodern age. The last 100, 150, 200 years really has been the modern era. And what more than anything else has been the seminal idea of the modern era? Infinite progress. Infinite progress. We can constantly progress. We can learn more scientific things. We can discover lands that people already are living on. We can um, continue to expand. We can mine more. We can take more out of the um, earth. We can do all of these things. And we can continually progress in our own lives. Actually, from a Calvinistic point of view, that is how you show that you are favored by God, is that your life continues to progress. And we in the New Thought Movement and in uh, the Science of Mind, really was, we really uh, said yes to that because we were seeking to experience the innate, inherent value of each and every human being and the, the, how important it is that each and every human me being gets to express the life that they came here to live and who they came here to be. The problem is, of course, that in the juggernaut of modernity, there's no place where this progress ends. And it's also the, cult, the, the, um, the engine for our economics, right? It's the economic engine that is to mean that every month or quarter or at least every year, there is a progress in profit. People make more money, especially shareholders. They make more money and more money and more money because that's the expectation. Infinite progress. Yeah, how do you think that's working? It's challenging, right? Because we do actually believe that we can grow in our lives, right? We inherently believe that we can grow. We can become more of who we are. We can strip away the veils of false belief, of the sense of separation. We can strip away the veil of unworthiness, of undeserving, of, oh, we'll get our, you know, we'll get the, the reward in heaven if we sacrifice now. All these ways in which this um, Philosophy seeks to really support our individual expressions when it gets married to this idea of infinite progress. Our own belief in prosperity contributes. It contributes to what's happening to our planet. It contributes to the disparity between the wealthy and the not so wealthy. It contributes to that. So Karen and I want us to really ex explore reimagining prosperity. Not that we can't be prosperous, but that our prosper prosperity must, in fact, come out of the beauty of life. Oh, I would like to have my rainbow back, right? This rainbow is the product of this extraordinary outpouring of life. And there's the rainbow. When we seek after the rainbow itself, do you see that's kind of the problem?
When we're in the flow of life, that is the inherent impulse, the push of life itself to express as each one of us. And our prosperity is designed then to contribute to the whole, to contribute and participate, to make a blessing to be a blessing in the world, so that our prosperity isn't just for us. It's not just for the individual, but it is also how it furthers life as a whole and is an out expression and an out picturing of that beautiful life that is actually seeking to express. So, so the thing we are seeking for is seeking us. Not only am I seeking my good and seeking God, but life is seeking to express as us in its fullness, in its joy, in its abundance, in its prosperity, flowing through us as the very expression of life so that rainbows do appear. Of course, we know it's not always rainbows. <laughs> sometimes it's storm and sometimes it's quiet and and yet those rainbows do, in fact, appear. So in this notion of the juggernaut of modernity c comes this thought we get from Aristotle. Now, I don't always like to quote, you know, dead white men from the Western culture, but sometimes they, in fact, have some really amazing things to say, so we won't, we won't leave them out either. So Aristotle says this amazing thing. He said, it is our good that draws us forward. It is what we think is our good, he qualifies, that draws us forward. Okay, so, so imagine this, right? So our, our lives, let's say, is a line that we are walking. It's a journey that we are walking. And the things that we think are good for us draw us forward. So when I am feeling the need for comfort and go to my Starbucks and get my little Starbucks for my little comfort because I know by God it's going to make me feel better, how far do you think that draws me forward? Not so much, right? It actually keeps me exactly where I am, makes me comfortable with what's going on. And now we might say we want some more good. We want a better job, we want a little more money, we want a home. All of these things draw us forward. But what happens when we achieve them? There we are. And we have to want something else that draws us forward again. Aristotle's contention, which I think is really quite extraordinary, is that the larger our good that we are seeking the further it draws us. Yes? The larger the good we are seeking, the further it draws us. So what is larger than my home, my job, my life? Well, the life of my family. My family's home, my family's life, my family's good. Okay. Well, what's larger than that? The community, the community I'm a part of, the nation, the humanity, life itself, God, whatever we think of that thing to be, right? Spirit, infinite reality, that one infinite power and presence, the intangible, whatever we think that, right? That is the largest thing. And when we are seeking that experience and to align our lives with that experience, do you see when that is our good, that will draw us our whole lives because it's the largest good we can seek, whatever we, however we describe that or imagine that to be. And if it's drawing us forward, do you see it's not the individual forms of prosperity that we are seeking, but we are expressing the abundance of the universe through the forms of our lives as we are moving toward and being drawn by this large good. Then our prosperity is a blessing. Our prosperity is in fact a blessing to ourselves, our families, our communities, our nation, the people that we associate with, humanity as a whole, and life itself. 
But notice that when we are seeking good like that, it's not this never-ending progress of stuff, forms. There's a desire to express and experience life as opposed to acquire things that we think are big enough good. It shifts the whole perspective. We do expect to be prosperous, but it is an outpicturing of seeking this larger life that is a life that works for me and a world that works for everyone, that is a whole and complete system like nature, like the abundance of nature, like the ecosystems where everything is in support of everything else, everything is needed, everything is contributing, nothing is just taking and taking and taking. Everything is a part of the whole, just like we are. Just like each and every human being and each and every being of life itself, part of the whole. And every one of us has something to offer and to contribute. And when we are being that and allowing that to pull us forward, truthfully our prosperity is assured because we have enough of whatever is needed to make those next steps. Then it's not infinite progress in particular forms. It's infinite progress in the deeper and deeper and deeper awareness of life, of the one, of the joy and abundance, wholeness that is the truth of life itself. And we're moving in alignment with that. So this month we're going to talk about a number of different ways in which we might really get a hold of this in a really powerful way that allows us not just to continue the juggernaut of modernity, but to come into a deeply aligned, co-creative place with life itself where our lives are truly a blessing. We've been really blessed, and I've been really blessed, with a huge prosperity of new staff here at CSL Dallas. We've been blessed by the prosperity of being able to be back together again in a whole new way. Do you see this is the abundance of the universe showing up? So one of the ways that the abundance of the universe is showing up, I'm going to turn this talk over to Karen, but we're going to bring her up here just for a minute, and we're going to let you know, come on up here, come on up here, we're going to let you know that part of the abundance of the universe and all of this is that Karen is going to take her first sabbatical this summer. Yes. We're super excited. Thank you to you all who have made this possible. Thank you to our staff who is making this possible. Um, she's been with us for eight years. She was supposed to get her first sabbatical in five, and then of course the pandemic hit and that was that. Um, and so Karen's gonna be on her sabbatical June and July of this year, and then I'll be joining her in August for our annual vacation. So yeah, do you see prosperity shows up in so many ways, and even when it's not exactly how we think it might be, or it's not this infinite progress in the materialistic world, we are now able to support Karen in her prosperity, despite the fact that we've been through a pandemic. Is that not prosperity? <laughs> right? Right. Right? And that, I mean, that's just like a little window in what each of us can do and have and experience and how much we want for every single person on the planet to have that also. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm really excited. I will miss you all, and um, I'm really excited about all the creativity that I got to do on uh, my sabbatical, so thank you, each and every one of you. So there are. There, I, I, um, I love how Petra really is teeing up this month. It's my favorite topic. It's my specialty. It's the thing that I actually walk the walk and talk the talk, and prove every day of my life, especially since coming into Science of Mind um, in 2007. Um, and there are many different forms of prosperity. And um, 
the way that Peter talked about how our, the biggest thing, I love that. Boy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, tape record that snippet in me. The biggest thing we can think of and how it draws us, right? And I want to take you back about 30 years in my life. Um, I won't fill in the gap because we'll be here forever. But if we look back, I, um, I started a sales career after getting a marketing and sales concentration degree. And my first job was at General Electric, GE, selling light bulbs in my, uh, I think I was 18, 19, maybe 20. But it was my first, you know, sales job and I started out pretty pretty well and in that 23 year sales and marketing career I financially progressed each year right in my early 20s I, I think I was 21 when I bought my first house that was a big deal right uh, in Tampa Florida I still can picture it in my mind like I am a homeowner because I didn't want to rent and I knew the benefits of homeownership and I just took the leap of faith and did that. And then all of a sudden I had all this debt in my life, right, that I hadn't had before. And, and so, um, and I was in my early 20s. I don't know about y'all, but I was really into the stuff and the glitz and the glamour and, you know, wearing the right things, driving the right thing and uh, furnishing that home and, you know, have the friends over and be ba da ba da ba da I'm in my mid-twenties now, and um, my father, I love and adore so much and formed so much of my life, my father, I'll never forget, called me and said, I have a birthday present that I want to give you this year. I'm like, great, Dad, what is it? I'm so excited. And he said, this is the birthday present. You are going to take one credit card a month and cut it up and send me the half of it every single month until you're down to one credit card. And I went, what? <laughs> uh, that, that's not a gift. What? Because he, he sort of knew through conversation that I was accumulating some debt, debt that I could get out of because of my earning, but it was going fast and rapid. And he said, so do that. I did it, begrudgingly, but I did it. And I think that was the start of once I got down to one credit card that I actually felt the taste, just a little taste of freedom, financial freedom. And then the big moment of the first time, I mean, I really tasted financial freedom in my early 20s was when I sold that first house and bought me a better house. But any of y'all know this, you usually close on the sale of that house and then a day or two later, you buy the next one, right? And there was this moment in this gap where I felt financially free. I didn't know a soul. Because I had paid down that credit card debt, and I didn't have a mortgage. I had a company car. So I didn't have a car note. And I got to taste what it felt like. Like I could just go anywhere, walk away, because I don't know anybody, anything. And then in less than 48 hours, I felt like I had it on me again. I think that started one of my big things in life. A big picture thing for me is that I wanted to live financially free. I wanted to know what it was like to not owe anything to a soul. And that took me a bit. Science of mine and coming here to CSL Dallas and really working, I mean, it's my main focus of ensuring that I am in divine oceanic substance. It's everywhere present. It's always around me. It's through me. It's moving through my life. You know, I have things. So come to my workshop on May 22nd. You do not want to miss it. And, and it's like, okay. And so I started moving. And then when Peter and I finally got together, um, we made a commitment and, and felt like, okay, we're going to combine the finances, this, and that was quite the journey, y'all. But, you know, moving and moving and grooving and all of this, and it, we held the vision of financial freedom. Now, those 23 years in sales, my, my income increased, even during a recession. If you look at the track, it didn't dip. It just kept going until I became a minister. 
And, It's about a quarter of what I was used to. But it's not the amount that's significant. It's what idea am I holding and moving to, right? And we got two ministers' salary now, right? And uh, I think it was three or four years ago, we made the decision, thanks to uh, a gift from my father, we paid cash for the cabin in the woods that we enjoy. Don't know a thing there. Nada. Um, every month, zero credit card debt. Boom. We decided a few years ago that we wanted to taste it and never look back. We paid off the rest of our condo. So we are living financially free. Like... And, and it is, a, and so, like, and, and what that's done for us, and, and so we want this for everyone, it's possible. It doesn't matter the amount someone makes. It's the journey to get to that feeling of financial freedom and that belief, and then what does one do with it? And like Peter talked about now, you know, it doesn't matter what's happening every month. It's the credit cards paid off every month. It is magic. I don't know how she does the finances and the quicken, and then she says, okay, pay off the credit card bill, and there's always more than enough. But we get to go beyond ourselves. We've gone beyond ourselves. We go to our family. We certainly come to this community. So think about this, how this works. The community, your generosity gives us a salary, and a big portion of that salary comes right back here. Isn't that amazing? And we go beyond this community. We now give to uh, World Wildlife Fund and the Nature Conservatory and the things that we care about for the planet. And we give there freely and fully. And we're still able to live financially free, not owe anything, and um, continue to build that and build that. And that's also what this month is about. So I wanted to share that story, thank goodness, I went away from the things, and we're into the experiences of our life. We have a little condo with a little garden patch out front that she gets to play in, and a place in New Hampshire, right? And, um, and we want less is more, because we want more experiences. We want to be able to, that's just us. And we want to see the world more, and we want to be free, and not worry about even a kitty cat anymore. Can we leave the cat and can we go away? You know, so we're making those kind of choices. And, um, and it feels really good. And so what are the visions, the big pictures for your reimagined prosperity? That's the key. That's what we got to, it's the what. Don't worry about the how. I just knew my what was, I knew what that tasted like. And you know, every time I did that, I sold a house and bought a house. And I taste it again, and then sold a house, and, buy, and I was like, wow, did I do this? What if I just didn't own a house, right? You know, I did that for 30 years, and now it's like, I own a condo and a place in the woods, and no, I don't want more stuff, right? And we only have so much wall space for our work anyway. And, and so, but what is the vision of your life? That's the thing we want you to get clear on this month. What are some of those things? Is it financial freedom? Is that one of them? What is it? That's one for us. And so Peter's going to help us move into that right now. And so that you can reimagine your prosperity and to know that all things are possible as this one life that is abundant. Thank you, Karen. So we're going to talk about expecting and accepting our good and what that looks like. We're going to talk about sustainability and resilience in our prosperity and what that means. Um, we're going to talk about, I can't remember what the other two things are, but they're brilliant, I'm sure. <laughs> so, um, oh, and gems. Karen's going to talk about gems, generosity, generosity, energy, and gems. Generosity, energy, money, and spirit. Um, and then we're going to close and wrap up with financial freedom because ultimately we had this beautiful Seder dinner this uh, uh, um, uh, Passover. We had this beautiful Seder dinner here and one of the questions or one of the um, 
reasons we were um, lifting the first glass and of wine and having this Seder dinner was in service to those who don't know the difference between more and enough. What if we reimagined prosperity as enough as opposed to more? And what if we knew that we always had enough? And what if we knew that there was enough for every person on the planet? And what if we knew that there was enough energy that we didn't have to keep raping the planet for it? And what if we knew that there was an abundance of life for each and every, not just person, but being? What if, what if we were able to let go of more and really embraced enough in a whole new way, not, not, not prosperous. Do you see? Not, not, I mean, when we moved into our little condo, Karen was like, oh my God, it's so little. <laughs> and now we're like, we can't imagine having anything bigger. It's a, it's a good footprint for the planet. It's easy for us to take care of. It's easy for us to travel and do the things that we want to do. So we're going to invite you right now. What we're going to do, we're going to invite you right now to turn to a neighbor um, we're going to invite you to pair up with two people. Just turn to a neighbor. If you're online and you have somebody there in the room with you, we'd love for you to turn to that person. If you're by yourself, you can spend some time writing about this, journaling about this, but just, you know, find somebody. Turn around, c c buddy up with somebody. Um, and what the question, just t uh, find, just look around. I'm sure you're going to find somebody. And uh, I'm, g I'm looking to make sure we have no, you know, straggle. If you need to, you can certainly have three in a group. It's really okay. Um, just making sure you got somebody to talk to. Now, you've had no time to think about this, right? So I'm asking for a stream of consciousness response. If you were to reimagine prosperity, not the way your parents taught you, not the way the advertising agency would like you to have, not the way that our economic engine would like you to continue to buy, 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 not the way that maybe you've lived up until this moment. Maybe it's something that, that, that got opened up for you in the pandemic. Maybe, who knows what it is. Stream of consciousness. I'm going to give you two minutes each. So I'm going to... I'm going to have, I don't know what I'm going to do, ring a bell, do something. Two minutes each. I want you to stream of consciousness say, if you reimagined prosperity right now in this moment in your life that was good for you and good for everyone, tell your partner what that looks and feels like. Ready, set? Oh, let's wait, let's wait. Let's say, everybody pick an A and a B, A and a B, everybody pick an A and a B. A and a B, Okay. You got A and a B, because we don't want to hem and haw, and who's going to go first, blah, 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 right? A and a B. Okay, good. Okay, Bs, Bs, you get to go first. Ready, set, go.
partner Sang, and now we're going to switch. So, uh, partner A, it's your turn now. Your last uh, statement here, um, finishing up your statement. So, all right, so finishing up. So I just want to check in with you. Um, so so how does it feel? How does it, tell me, shout out some words. How does it feel to reimagine your prosperity? Free, contentment, freedom, comfort, secure, excited, promising, peace of mind, joyful, lightness. Does that not sit as true prosperity? Those words. True prosperity, real prosperity. That is when abundance and prosperity are the same thing. So that's what we're going to be talking about all month. Yeah, cool. Joe Tinker is going to come up here and tell us about a few more things. That was fabulous. Thank you, Reverend Petra and Karen. Uh, let us get back into it here. Okay, greeters, hey, it's time to come forward with our abundance baskets. Thank you so much. You're right on target. <laughs> Let's all say today's abundance affirmation together. Here we go. The all-intelligent creative presence is the source of all that I am. Infinite mind is fully operating through me. I expect and experience more prosperity as I draw from the divine oceanic substance. And so it is. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, CSL Dallas intends to continue providing key principles and practices for you to reimagine your prosperity. And we invite you to give back to CSL Dallas. Give generously because it is definitely an affirmation that you have more than enough uh, by the ways that you give. So we join you in consciousness. We also encourage you uh, to give at CSLDallas.org slash give or with our text give numbers, which you can see on the screen. 
All right, here, a couple more things coming up. This Saturday is a big day for CSL Dallas. We haven't been able to do enough in person for the last two years. We've got a double dip for Saturday. Come and have a great time. Here's what's going on. We have the Pause for Peace. This is a walk with our labyrinth and a plant piece with every step. So we have a labyrinth here at CSL Dallas. If you have not done this before, uh, join us uh, next Saturday. We're participating in the collective consciousness on International Labyrinth Day. We're affirming peace with hundreds of places around the globe that have labyrinths. So we want you to join us. This year, we're walking for peace from noon until 6 o'clock. You don't have to be here that whole time. From <laughs> From noon to 6 o'clock, it's available to you to come here on campus and walk the labyrinth. Um, and then on the same day, oh, by the way, excuse me, while you're walking the labyrinth, if you decide then you would like to uh, have meditation or confidential affirmative prayer with our spiritual coaches, those will be available here for you too. So all of the beauty of CSL Dallas uh, through the labyrinth will be here next Saturday. And then on that same day, you can join us for a CSL Dallas picnic, our second in-person event that same day. While the labyrinth walk is taking place, we encourage everyone to also participate. Before or after you walk the labyrinth, you're, we're hosting a potluck style picnic. It's at Farmer's Branch Parks. So that's very nearby. It's from noon to two, and everybody's invited. CSL Dallas will be providing uh, the main course um, or the main dishes and drinks. But you've got to bring the drinks, the sides, the salads, desserts. Bring something to share, and that way we'll all have our community meal together. You can share with each other. So labyrinth and picnic is going to be two great things next Saturday. And also announcing our nature circle, getting back together in person with our nature circle for all you lovers of nature. This month on Saturday, May 25th, our nature circle is leading a one-hour hike at the North Shore Trail of Grapevine Lake. It's a beautiful area. You want a uh, chance to check that out if you haven't been there before. Grapevine Lake and the North Shore Trail. Join us for a chance to cleanse your mind of any negative thoughts and continue to heal your soul in nature. Someone's coming up on me here. I'm just looking over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somewhere this. No, no it's not. It's okay. You okay. It. Just let him know you're going to do it. I've got it, Petra. I got it. Okay, thank you. I got it. Little birdie told me right before service. <laughs> oh, you want to do it? All right. Petra's going to do it here in just a minute. I'll call her back up. <clears throat> Okay, but here's a couple more things. We want to express our immense gratitude to the group of CSL Dallas family and friends who helped further beautify our Joy Village Playground, our Journey of Youth Playground. Give these folks a round of applause. So you can check it out. Come check out our newly improved playground behind the campus uh, after service today. Also, we've got an incredible artist of the month this month in our artist gallery, Carol Knight Williams. Carol enjoys painting with watercolors and watching the way the pigments work together. She says it reminds her of Mother Nature in the fall when the leaves begin to turn. And when she's not painting, she can usually be found outside in her garden where she gets her inspiration. So go across the breezeway and check out the beautiful art displayed in Panky Hall. And oh, now I'm going to ask Petra to say what else is going on in Panky Hall after service today. Yes, what else is going on? Mar Reverend Marsha, would you come on up here, please? Uh, Reverend Marsha. Come on up here. Hi. How are you? Well, life is prosperous. Things change in that prosperity. So what we are letting you know is that Reverend Marsha is retiring again. Finally. <laughs> For the third time, Reverend Marsha is in fact retiring. So we, I want to say a beautiful thank you to her. She's, going, she's already having gratitude circles. We're having gratitude circles for her with the staff. But we want you to have an opportunity to say thank you to her. Um, so today in Panky Hall, there's an opportunity for you to write thank you notes um, for her, to her, to express your gratitude to her. Next Saturday, the church picnic is going to, the center's picnic is going to be her last big hurrah in terms of being on staff. Yeah. Now, Reverend Marsh is not moving. She's nope. not taking a pulpit anywhere else. Nope. 
This is her community, and she will be a part of us. She's just tired of organizing stuff. <laughs> she's ready she's like, to retire. Yes. She's ready to travel. She's ready to travel. Be so, with my family. So you will see her around, and she has promised us to be part of any food brigade that we need. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we're going to have the opportunity for you to say thank you, Marsha. We want to say thank you to you. I know you came back on staff. Marsha was with us on staff for quite a while. Yeah. Um, then she came back on staff with us right before the pandemic, which was kind of an odd time to start on staff. Yeah. Um, held our sacred, uh, sacred. Um, Sacred Service Ministry space, our pastoral care space, and really participated beautifully with our staff. And we are so grateful that you're back in our community. We begrudgingly free you of all of that work because it's time for you to be free, financially free, right? This is a whole nother level of prosperity um, and joy and beauty. So please make sure you go to Panky Hall today. If you are online and you want to send Reverend Marsha something, please send it to RevMarsha at CSLDallas.org. Please send your thank yous to her. Um, and come to the picnic on Saturday so that yeah. you can also say thank you to her if you're not here on campus today. Yeah. We love you, Marsha, and we are so, so, so super grateful for you, and everybody's going to get to tell you that today. So let's please acknowledge Marsha. Yay. And remember, as every Sunday, if you'd like to seek spiritual mind treatment, if you'd like affirmative prayer from one of the spiritual coaches here at CSL Dallas, go right across the breezeway to the Peace Room. <clears throat> Pardon me. And they'll be happy to meet with you. And uh, for those of you online, uh, you can have a private uh, Zoom room link uh, hooked up in the chat box. You'll see the link to do that with our spiritual coaches as well. And now let us sing out this celebration with I Release. Thank you. 